Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the technical pitch from the team from Egypt. So if you are interesting, interested, so please come to this stage. So, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And my name is Nada, biotechnology student from the AUC team. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, three of the ideas we've been working on. So basically, the first one is our uh, envisioned biosensor, and it's basically a lateral flow immunoassay, or LFA, and it uses um, uh, FICO uh, uh, erythrin, or RBE, to produce a fluorescent signal that can be measured via a smartphone-based detector. So here is uh, an idea of how it, work, uh, how it works, and uh, you must have uh, heard lateral flow today, so I'm going to be fast. So the sample is a blood plasma or serum is loaded onto the sample bed, and uh, it's a treated sample bed. So if it's blood, cells cannot go further; only the fluids can go. They uh, the sample uh, moves with a capillary flow towards the other end of the testing strap, and at the conjugate bed, it uh, gets attached to uh, the antibodies that have the RBE attached to them. It's a uh, uh, fluorescence protein. So uh, this complex moves along the strap to the testing line where there are this, the, and the, the other part of the complex, the, the second antibody. It binds to it and fixes the immunocomplex or the sandwich immunocomplex to the test line. And then you have fluorescence at the test line indicating a positive result. So basically, uh, this fluorescent, uh, fluorescent signal or fluorescence is measured via a mobile phone detector and this is actually uh, how it works. Uh, the dye or the RBE is excited via a LED light, LED light. Uh, it comes from the LED through an excitation filter and an excitation lens, then falls onto the lateral flow test strip. And then the fluorescence is captured uh, via an emissions lens, uh, emission lens and the collection lens and onto a mobile phone. This mobile phone has an app, an application. It's a specially designed application to uh, analyze this fluorescence signal and uh, match the, the, the intensity of it on a preset curve where you can find the level of anti BMP in your sample. So uh, this is how the, the design of the device will look like, actually, minus the filters and the lenses because they go there. Uh, so this mobile phone fits in there and the test strip fits right there and the camera and the test line face each other. This is uh, how it works. So the expected performance of this prototype is that you use blood, plasma or serum, only 20 microliters of that, and it takes only 10 minutes. This is aided by the properties of the membrane itself and how fluids move through the capillary flow. And it has a wide dynamic range of signal, and it's simple and friendly, and everybody has a mobile phone that can be uh, taught how to use in, uh, this app. So. Uh, What's novel about this? What's novel about an app? Actually, we decided to add an integration function to our app. This integration function is aimed at the medical users. So not only does the doctor need to enter the age of the patient, he can also enter his or her sex, uh, body mass index, uh, drug use, or the chronically or uh, currently used drugs, and uh, any other thing that affects anti BMB, so he can have a real or near to real significance of this value of anti BMB to, to the patient in, in the context of that patient, so that we can have more individualized de medical decisions. That's basically aiming at individualized medicine, uh, just to say that. So as we researched that, uh, let me tell you, we don't have an automatic dispenser, and we need that to dispense our, um, yeah, to dispense our uh, reagents onto the strip. So we found a fountain bin manual dispenser, and we made it. Then we go to the prototype. It's an ELISA test. ELISA is actually antigen antibody reaction, but it's a calorimetric signal, and we use a cuvette and a mobile base detector as well to to measure it. Also via uh, a, a mobile phone camera. It's more complex than the the app, but it uh, for this purpose we use it. And the, it actually takes a lot of time, 25 to 30 minutes, compared to, to the other one. And the current prototype only tests up to 30, 360 picograms. 
there we have alternative strategy. It's a bit of a chemical reaction, like a go-to reaction for arginine. We test the arginine level of anti propyl B on the arginine content. It produces a red color in this reaction. So actually, this is just a lot of arginine, 0.14 gram per liter. So uh, we tested, we found that 12% of anti propyl B is arginine, and uh, we made a portable low-tech detector to detect this color, this red signal. But this uh, in includes a lot of sample volume, 305 milliliters, and it's quite, if it's not a microfluidic design, you can't actually bring it to the public because it uses chemicals and they, are, they include corrosives. So uh, these are the curves for that, and they are linear. And actually, we opted for... Uh, to separate the, the antibody be using magnetic nanoparticles loaded with antibodies, but actually we couldn't do that in time because our antibodies got denatured from storing in the airport. So that's basically what we worked on, and feel free to ask any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, how did you come to this idea? <laughs> the, um, well, the first one. Uh, so basically, we were sitting there, and we were trying to find what's uh, the the fastest. We were concerned about the time and the cost of the test uh, at first and foremost, because we did uh, ask uh, experts in the medical field and did a survey to know what they would like in a test. So most of them said, we want it rapid and we want it not expensive. So we tried to find something that's, that meets these criteria. So lateral flow assay actually fits our market, the Egyptian and the Middle Eastern market, very well. People are really... Uh, yeah, they are familiar with lateral flow assays, like um, test the use on a regular basis. So we think they, that could fit their market very well, and it fits also the needs of the patients and the doctors at this time. That's why we decided on this idea uh, at first. So uh, since you do your quantification with the mobile phone, I wondered if how the different camera properties of different brands of mobile phones can change the, the readout and if you can somehow um, uh, adjust for that. Uh, well, actually, um, our engineering team opted for some versions of mobile phone that are, uh, you can say, more sophisticated or have uh, camera properties that are high. So like Samsung uh, Galaxy S7, I think, and iPhone 7. So basically, that's what we tested, and we don't think that uh, lesser uh, camera properties would work very well to test uh, really small, small signals. So we try to uh, make the conditions of the test standard and, and work for the mobile phone, but ultimately you will have camera properties that, that will only work for, for this test. This requires experimentation, actually. A lot of mobile phones, not just the ones we tested. We tested only three, but this needs a lot of experimentation. A lot more. Yeah, um, yeah you, uh, the, the device creates a fluorescent signal. Uh, and how does the ca a normal camera measure fluorescent signal? Is it transformed into an optical light signal? or? Well, actually, you were asking, <laughs> you should ask our engineer at the testing table because I am in the biology department of that. So they found this system that uh, can capture the fluorescence via this lens filter system kind of uh, property of the device. So you capture the fluorescence and you measure it via the mobile phone. But for the specifics, you can really ask our engineer at, at the table there. She will give you all the specifics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're talking about the Eliza Bayes 
in this prototype, we actually measure accurately from each concentration from 1 to 360 picogram per minute. Uh, concentrations that are more than that, they give a higher signal, of course, but not they don't fall into the, the curve that we were able to, the linear curve that we were able to measure. So it can measure a lot, but they don't fall into the curve. This accurately than the limit I was telling you about. That's one, two, three hundred and sixty picograms per minute. Okay. Thank you. Thank you once again.